this story proves so much of what is wrong with modern science and actually proves a couple theories that I've been thinking of as true for a while. Um, this kind of lends more support to that. So the first, it's they found a 1.8 billion year old fossil bearing rock, which in itself is ridiculous that they can try to estimate that age. Um, and <laughs> they discovered the greatest absence of evolution ever found. And then go on to say that it proves that evolution is happening <laughs> or is real by no evolution happening in these microorganisms. We can conclude that evolution happens. He said the lack of evolution supports Darwin's theory of evolution. Go figure. So to sum it up quickly, they found sulfur bacteria microorganisms that they are guessing is 1.8 billion years old in rocks from Western Australia's coastal waters. Right? They also found the bacteria indistinguishable from modern sulfur bacteria found in the mud off the coast of Chile. Okay? So we're talking about Western Australia and Chile. That they're exactly the same and they haven't evolved in, as they say, 2 billion years. Because they go on to say that the environment has been stable (laughs) for the last 2 billion years... So there hasn't been any need for the bacteria to evolve, right? Sorry, three, excuse me, three billion years, not two, three billion years. The environment has remained essentially unchanged, quoting the article. (laughs) And he says, this is my favorite part, says, given that evolution is a fact, the lack of evolution needs to be explained. I don't I don't even know where to start with that sentence. And this guy makes a good salary at, at UCLA. And and this just again proves exactly what's wrong with science. They go in with the preconceived notion and no, ma- no matter what they find it fits into their little framework. All right? So you find something that hasn't evolved in what you claim is 3 billion years and you say it proves evolution. Just the same way that cosmologists look out into the sky, don't see anything that their theory predicts, and say it proves their theory is true. It just, it drives me nuts. But, again, we're talking about two completely different parts of the world. Couldn't be farther apart, really. Western Australia and the coast of Chile, which is Western South America. So, for for them to... For for you to believe what they're saying here, you have to believe that these two remote locations have both been stable where these bacteria have not needed to evolve or change in any way for half the history of the world, as they say, six billion year old planet, on two completely different sides of the planet. Yeah, that's ridiculous. The odds of that are astronomical to be unbelievable. If you were talking about within a 10 mile radius of one another, that would still kind of be pushing it if you're not even in the same pond, you know? You know, you say, I have a lake here on my yard and the neighbor has a lake over there, a little pond thing on her yard. And hers looks completely different than mine. So I'm sure that she has organisms in there that I don't have in mine, and vice versa. So to say that Western Australia and Western South America have the identical bacteria that have not evolved from this fossilized bacteria in this rock that you're guessing is 1.8 or 3 billion years old or whatever random number they're throwing out here, because carbon doesn't last that long, so I don't know how they're figuring that out. It's ridiculous. It's absurd. Okay. It also uh, helps to prove the expanding Earth theory. Because Australia, South America, and Antarctica 
if you shrink the earth, would have been very close to one another. You know, the coast of Chile would have been touching, as I understand it, either southern or eastern Australia. And Antarctica at the same time, obviously. Because if you look at the, the rim of fire, the Pacific Ocean, shrink that the same way that looks like the Americas fit with Africa and Europe, the same thing holds true on the other side which is why I think the expanding Earth is actually what happened. You know, you get a massive influx of energy into the planet and the core and everything can't help but expand. You're getting so much energy that has to turn into so much matter. It's just the way that the world or the universe is at this point. E equals MC squared and all that. You know, energy equals matter. You get more energy coming into the planet. It has to express itself somehow, so it expresses itself in matter. So... The Earth expands, and this would help prove that, that this bacteria that is in this rock and that is currently living in Australia and South America are unchanged. They're identical because, you know, they were in the same area <laughs> back what they claim is billions of years ago, but it's <clears throat> probably just thousands, tens of thousands of years ago. You know, the same bacteria was living in the same part of the world. The world expanded. Now they're on completely different opposite sides of the world. I I don't want to bury the headline here that the lack of evolution proves evolution. You know, science is so backwards and so broken that, you know, as long as people are still getting the check and paying their rent, they'll say whatever their people tell them to say. And they'll prove whatever their people tell them to prove. You know, there is no real scientific inquiry anymore. You know, people go in, the, the, the authors of this study going in knowing evolution is real. So when they find something that hasn't evolved, that has to prove evolution is real. It's, it's ridiculous. 